Alright guys, Doggo here. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a few tips on painting your RC Lexon body. So I did a few RC bodies over the process of uh, quarantine for COVID-19. I did a few for my TRX-4 and my Slash. Uh, but I like to think that they came out pretty well. You guys will be able to see them later in the video so that you can judge. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple things that I learned um, so that you guys can hopefully incorporate that to your next project or RC body. Uh, the first thing that I actually did was I began by cutting the body. Uh, the most effective way that I found to cut through Lexon uh, or Lexon scissors with a hobby knife or X-Acto blade. Uh, I just didn't have the hand stability to make clean lines um, with those with those tools. But if that's something you guys want to incorporate, then by all means. Uh, the ones I personally used were the Traxxas curved models. The model number is pictured here if you guys are interested. So obviously, your body arrives completely uncut. You know, pictured here we have the Cherokee, the Jeep. Uh, but it really doesn't change no matter what vehicle you're actually utilizing. But what we're attempting to do here is place the body onto the chassis so that you can mark and then ream the post holes. Uh, to do this, you're more than likely going to have to cut the lower portion of the unstamped plastic off of the body. I like to refer to this as zone one. It's more or less that flat area of uh, plastic uh, around the base of the body that's unstamped. Uh, as a note, you, know, you shouldn't immediately begin uh, by cutting all the way up to the bumper. Uh, or the stamp plastics, you know, your fenders, uh, you know, your, your front and rear bumper, uh, because of the fact that if you have things like lower rock rails, lower bumpers, um, you know, you may need to keep some of that excess plastic. And it kind of goes without saying, you know, obviously don't begin by cutting portions of the form plastic. You know, it's pretty evident, you know, where you should be, where the lowest point is that you should be cutting. Um, so pictured here, you guys can see my Traxxas Slash 4x4 with the Bronco body. I actually had a cut into the body to fit the custom RPM bumpers, but again, this should only be done if you have to do it, and done so in small increments. So this will actually bring us to zone 2, where we cut what we need to, basically to get our body low enough to actually touch the body post. I found that it's easiest to cut up the corners and treat basically each side of the body as its own, and not, a, not attempt to cut multiple sides at once as corners can be a little bit tricky uh, obviously following this we actually mark you know we center our body we mark it uh, and then we physically ream our post holes to mount the body to the chassis uh, for myself I use the Traxxas body reamer pictured here uh, but just keep in mind that once you ream the body and place it onto the body mounts it's going to be a quarter inch lower than where it is when you're marking it uh, so don't inadvertently you know, cut more than you need to off of you, for example, your front and rear bumper, and then find out you should have left about a quarter inch because now your body's sitting lower than when you actually marked it. All right, so you guys may have to sand down the edges of your body if you're having some issues with the uh, the cleanliness of your lines. So that was true for me in the fender areas. So I used a little bit of sandpaper and also a fingernail filer to sand down some of those rough edges and get them smooth. Uh, it's also important to note that you should thoroughly wash your RC body with a mild detergent, such as dish soap, uh, and then dry it to ensure the paint will adhere properly to the body. Alright guys, so for the second step, painting. And painting is all prep work, right? So what I mean by that is, for a good paint job, your masking needs to be clean and pressed firmly onto the body. The process of masking a body for me usually takes two to three hours uh, depending on the number of stripes and other details that I'm trying to uh, put onto the body. So I begin with the window covers that in the case of the Jeep and also the Forerunner that I'm painting in this video are included with the Proline bodies. For window trims I use some thin Tamiya masking tape and outline the windows. As a note the window covers may be wide enough in some of these sets uh, to where they cover the window and the window trim. So this will require obviously a little bit of extra trimming to the provided window mask sheets and then the addition of your own masking tape for the window trim. So most of the Proline bodies I know have the window trim stamped into the plastic so you can obviously use that as a handrail to kind of guide where you're emplacing your masking tape. Obviously when you guys are utilizing an X-Acto knife or something like that to trim your masking sheets or masking tape be sure not to press too hard, as you can damage your body. Uh, I also like to utilize masking tape to mask the roof racks, door handles, and possibly even the fenders if I'm you know, going for a specific custom look. Uh, this process obviously again requires the use of a, a hobby knife or an X-Acto knife. 
you know, ensure you are careful not to cut yourself like I did. Uh, luckily, Moggy is here to provide me with some, uh, some medical supplies. Alright, so I got myself patched up and I'm ready to continue the video. So what you guys are going to want to do is add long strips of masking tape and then trim them to the form of the window. So these will basically be removed just before you remove the window coverings and paint it black to simulate the window trim of the vehicle. So when adding stripes, I used a little bit of a wider Tamiya masking tape which is pictured here. A note that these are pictured or these are pictured with euro prices, that's because I live in Germany right now, uh, but they are still able to be located in the US using their part number. But be sure to press firmly and label each color on each stripe so that you know when to remove it and what color it should be painted. Step 3, the actual paint. So now that the hard prep work is done, we will actually paint the body. It's recommended that you start with the darkest color first by Proline. However, you can mitigate this through the use of multiple coats of the color you are using and then a coat of silver to prevent dark colors or bleaching colors you have already painted. So what this means is, if you start with white, like I did on my Forerunner, do three or four coats of that white and then a coat of silver to prevent darker colors such as red or black from darkening the initial white color you did. Have a plan for when you paint. So when I did my Forerunner, I began with white, then went to yellow, orange, and then the red, which took up the entire rear portion of the truck and also a small spot on the hood. Then I did the black window trim, roof rack, and door handles, which were all painted together. I then used smoke on the back windows to simulate window tint. Note with all paints, especially smoke, you should use light coats to prevent paint running. Be sure to paint in a well ventilated area, as the paint fumes are definitely not good to breathe in. So once you're satisfied with your paint job, it is recommended to coat the entire thing in black to prevent light from plastic, passing through or damage to the initial coloring from bashing. You can then finally remove the outer plastic coat and enjoy the benefits of your hard work. So lastly, I wanted to leave you guys with a preview of what I have in store for this TRX-4. I have a complete overhaul plan including the long arm lift, the upgraded motor, servos, and even the tracks as tracks. So if you guys want to track my progress, keep in touch by liking and subscribing. Check back soon for more videos and I hope this was helpful. Doggo, signing off.